Sanchez family. Kagamit saya, North Cotabato. Dali, ubalan nato si Cardinal Chito Tagle, Matag Domingo. So the word is post on Jescom TV. Hi, this is Joseph from Mabalakat. Join us and Cardinal Chito every Sunday on Word Expose on Jescom TV. Maayong adlaw. Ako di ay si Vanessa Jane Ondang from Cebu City. Ubani kami kada Domingo ni Cardinal Chito Tagle on the Word Expose on Jescom TV. Friends, greetings of joy and peace. I trust that you are well. Please continue exposing the Word with us every Sunday. Subscribe to JustCom TV, then watch and share the Word Exposed on your feed. Thank you. Ciao, mabuhay! You are watching The Word Exposed. Let us behold Jesus, the Word Incarnate, revealing Himself to us in the Sunday readings. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter. In the Gospel, we will hear another part of Jesus' discourse during His Last Supper with His disciples before His crucifixion and resurrection. Here, Jesus prepares them for His physical absence during which the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will be with them. He will teach them and remind them of all that Jesus taught them. Then Jesus leaves them His peace. During the Lenten season and the Holy Week, we saw this peace of Jesus. It is a peace that makes one feel secure in tribulations. This is the same peace that He gave His disciples during the Last Supper and in his Easter appearances. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Some who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved, because there arose no little dissension and debate by Paul and Barnabas with them. It was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and elders about this question. The apostles and elders, in agreement with the whole church, decided to choose representatives and to send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. The ones chosen were Judas, who was called Barsabbas, and Silas, leaders among the brothers. This is the letter delivered by them. The apostles and the elders, your brothers, to the brothers in Antioch, Syria, and Cilicia of Gentile origin, greetings, since we have heard that some of our number who went out without any mandate from us have upset you with their teachings and disturbed your peace of mind. We have with one accord decided to choose representatives and to send them to you along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have dedicated their lives to the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are sending Judas and Silas, who will also convey the same message by word of mouth. It is the decision of the Holy Spirit and of us not to place on you any burden beyond these necessities, namely, to abstain from meat sacrificed to idols, from blood, from meats of strangled animals, and from unlawful marriage. If you keep free of these, you will be doing what is right. Farewell. The Word of the Lord. O oh God, let all the nations praise you.
a reading from the book of Revelation. The angel took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It gleamed with the splendor of God. Its radiance was like that of a precious stone, like jasper, clear as crystal. It had a massive high wall with twelve gates where twelve angels were stationed and on which names were inscribed, the names of the twelve tribes of the Israelites. There were three gates facing east, three north, three south, and three west. The wall of the city had twelve courses of stones as its foundation, on which were inscribed the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb. The city had no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God gave it light, and its lamp was the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. Easter Love Easter is the triumph of love. The love of God in the risen Lord that is stronger than all the violence, all the hatred, and uh, the sin of the world. So let us see how the love that characterizes Jesus, the risen Lord, and the Easter community is manifested in our readings. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we see that Easter love is not a utopia. Easter love does not mean that there will no longer be any conflicts. No, in fact, in fact, it is in the midst of conflicts that they allowed the risen Lord, the Holy Spirit, and the disciples allowed Easter love to triumph. There was uh, an, an issue. Uh, the believers of Gentile origin were being forced by some to adopt Jewish customs and laws before they would be recognized as true followers of Jesus. This was counter to the message of St. Paul and Barnabas. And so there was a, an issue that was brought to the apostles and the church of the disciples in Jerusalem. And look at how they did it. First, in the midst of conflict, listen to one another. Share your difficulties. Share them. But share them in the, in the perspective of finding the truth, not just to destroy each other. And when there was an impasse, they brought it to the apostles and the church in Jerusalem. Then came a discernment process. The, the apostles and the church in Jerusalem listened again to all the views. They reflected on the word of God and in prayer saw where the Holy Spirit was leading them. This is the triumph of love not trying to destroy the people who disagree with me, but listening intently to them in the, in the light of the Word of God and in openness to the Holy Spirit. So the decision that was reached was, no, the Holy Spirit has decided it, and also the church in unity. And what was the decision? Not to impose further restrictions or burdens on the Gentiles. So they opened the gospel to all the people. Easter love. The Holy Spirit opens the salvation in Jesus Christ to all the peoples. And this is important. At the time when uh, divisions in the world 
are very clear. We see that it is Easter love, listening to one another, listening to the Word of God, listening to the Holy Spirit, then reaching a decision with humility. This is the triumph of love. And in the second reading, the vision of the new city, Jerusalem. Look at this. In the, on the walls of the, of the new city, Jerusalem, from above, created by God, the names of the 12 tribes of Israel were there. But also, on the stones, you have the 12 names, the names of the 12 apostles. So the old and the new will come together. And in that new Jerusalem, there is no temple, there is no building, but God himself is the temple, the Holy One. And the light is the Lamb of God. In God, the old, the new will come together. Easter love. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell you, I am going away, and I will come back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord Easter love. Let us not forget that Easter is about the victory of love over sin, hatred, violence, the victory of love over death. And we see this becoming a lifestyle, especially in the early Christian communities. In the first reading, we see that part of Easter love is yeah, in the midst of conflicts, in the midst of differences of of interpretation of, uh, of uh, the message of Jesus Christ, listening to one another, bringing our conflict to the apostles, to the leaders who also listened and prayed over scriptures and opened themselves to the Holy Spirit. And the manifestation of Easter love is that Christianity, you know, the, the gospel, and the salvation of Jesus is open to all. Wow. No one is excluded. In the second reading from the, Acts, uh, from the book of Revelation, we see this in the vision of St. John. The new city, Jerusalem, from above, will have in its walls the names of the 12 tribes, but the cornerstones, the stones, the foundation stones, will have the names of the 12 apostles. The old, the new will come together. And in the holy city, the temple is no longer a building, but God himself, the Holy One, who will bring together the old Israel and the new Israel in the light of the Lamb. A beautiful vision of love, especially in our divided world. Now the gospel. 
Jesus points to how love will happen. The first is this. He says, if you love me, you will keep my word. Our love for Jesus is manifested in our observance of the word of Jesus. That's how we do it, no? When we love someone, we keep their words. We keep their messages. We don't even erase their text messages. We keep their photographs. But when it comes to Jesus, love of Jesus means I keep his word. And not only locked up in my heart, but I keep it meaning I observe it. That's Easter love. Keep the word of Jesus. The second thing that Jesus does is he knows his disciples. His disciples are forgetful. <laughs> or his disciples are selective. We choose what we want to remember. And so Jesus will send the Holy Spirit, the spirit of love, who will teach us everything and who will remind us of all that Jesus had taught us. So the Holy Spirit is the power of love. We cannot love Jesus by our own efforts. We must be open to the Holy Spirit, the way the early Christian community witnessed to in the first reading. It was the Holy Spirit that will enable people who are diverse and who are in conflict to listen to each other and to listen to the teachings of Jesus. And finally, Easter love coming with peace. Jesus says, I give you my peace, not as the world gives peace, but as Jesus gives peace. And we see the peace, the love that Jesus gives through the Holy Spirit is union, communion, the gathering of peoples, not the division of peoples. The world offers peace by eliminating those who do not agree with me, eliminating those who differ from me. If my self-interests are promoted, then there will be peace. This is the way of the world, but that's not the way of the risen Lord and of the Holy Spirit. In our highly fragmented world, please, before Easter ends, rediscover Love, Easter love. Turn to the word of Jesus. Be taught by the Holy Spirit and spread the peace that only Jesus could give. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. How was your visit to Galilee? We hope it has been an invigorating experience. It always feels good to be strengthened by Jesus' friendship. Let us continue our recollection in pieces. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Eleventh Station The risen Lord sends the disciples into the world. Before the risen Lord ascended into heaven, he entrusted his disciples with three things. The mission to make disciples of all nations, to baptize them in the name of the triune God, and to teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. Came also the promise that he will be with them until the end of the ages. This shows how much the Lord believes in His disciples, including us. 
each of us is called and led to do something for God's kingdom. So today let us contemplate, where am I being called and led by Jesus? To the priesthood, religious life, married life, single blessedness? Remember, each of us has a unique role in God's kingdom. Afterwards, try to assess your reaction towards it. Does it overwhelm you? Do you feel happy about your calling? Keep in mind that wherever God calls and leads you, He will be with you until the end. That's His promise. Twelfth Station, The Risen Lord Ascends Into Heaven St. Mark noted that the risen Lord continues to work with His disciples even when He has ascended into heaven. In the coming days, please note the areas in your life where you need Jesus' guidance. Decision-making, discernment, choosing right from wrong, perseverance in faith amidst persecution, Remember that the ultimate guide is in the scriptures. Pick up your Bible, open it, listen to God's living word. Jesus, risen Lord, Thank you for entrusting us with an opportunity to participate in your mission. Please guide us, especially in areas where we feel uncertain and fearful. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have prepared reflection points for you. Please share them with your companions. The first point is, how have you been keeping Jesus' word in your daily life? Papaano mo tinutupad ang salita ni Jesus sa iyong pang-araw-araw na buhay? The second point is, how can we spread Jesus' peace in a world that offers false peace. Paano natin mapapalaganap ang kapayapaan ni Jesus sa mundo na nagdudulot 
ng huwad na kapayapaan. Heavenly Father, You have blessed this humble program with a decade of mission on air. You have gifted it with the talents, hard work, and financial support of many generous people, so that as your word is exposed, many more may know, love, and serve Jesus. Lord Jesus, be with us always, your production staff and partners, your viewers and benefactors, that we may not run out of courage, zeal, and charity in fulfilling our mission daily. And when our limitations and weaknesses surface, please ask the Father to send the Holy Spirit to purify us and set our hearts on fire with renewed faith, hope, and love, so we may serve you for many more years to come. Amen. Friends, thank you for your company. We pray that the Word of God would find fulfillment in your life and His blessings be always upon you. And we hope you could be with us again next Sunday here on The Word Exposed.